And we are good. The fifth quarter podcast, episode two. And we did our previous episode, me and Josh. Um, we did our previous episode a few days ago, and now we got a new guest with us, our friend Reese. Say hello, Reese. Hi. Yeah, but uh, we got uh, we got a few topics to discuss. A lot of NFL news is blooming around us as free agency awaits. A lot of things have happened lately. Uh, so we'll be starting out with Khalil Mack and how he was traded. This is a little bit of late news, but we'll still discuss it. Um, uh, Amari Cooper has been traded to the Browns, and uh, Kirk Cousins is back with the Vikings. And then we'll talk about Deshaun Watson not facing criminal charges, so he could be traded. And then finally, the latest news, we got Tom Brady, who is back, um, as he says. But first of all, Khalil Mack was okay. traded – for a few picks to the uh, Chargers, and he's now teaming up with Joey Bosa. What are you guys' thoughts on that? That's a good trade for the Chargers. Nobody's going to stop Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack. They're just, they're really, it's going to be the instant rush. Yeah. They really need the extra pass rush because their um, defense was atrocious last year. It was like fifth worst in the league last year, so they really need an extra run stopper. They really did. Yeah, like, I mean, the Chargers, I, I like Khalil horrible. Mack. I think a lot of people are saying that the Chargers robbed the Bears. I think this is an equal trade for both sides. Like, we knew the Bears were going to have to trade Khalil Mack eventually because they were just in a real – they were they're in a rebuild mode, and Khalil Mack, he's, he's going to want money, and he's getting up there in age. So I just think it was for the best of both teams. Chargers are – they're they're a rising team, but – that could have a lot of potential. Uh, and then the Bears just kind of needed those picks to surround their team with. So, uh, I mean, for, at, for the Bears' perspective, what do you guys think about this? I mean, I think it, they definitely need to get rid of him money-wise. They're in a rebuild. They need to be able to pay Young. So the draft picks that they'll get will probably help them out in the future. My question for you guys is, do you think the Chargers – it will be a playoff team next year. Well, I think I think so. Uh, I, I, they they were right there. Like they they win that game against the Raiders and making the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So I think you add a guy like Khalil Mack. Like I know Russell Wilson's coming into the AFC West, but is that really going to do? It's going to do a lot, but is it? I don't think it's really holding the Chargers out. I think it's holding more the Raiders out of playoff contention. What do you think about yeah. that, Reese? Like, the thing about Khalil Mack I is... I think it's um, yeah. a good trade, and it makes the AFC West just be crazy. Yeah, like, the AFC West is by far the best division in football. Like, any one of those teams could do its like, stuff in the playoffs. Because the Chiefs... Like if, if you placed any of those teams in other divisions, they're winning it. Yeah. Like, if you have, like, the, the Broncos. You have the Chiefs. Chiefs are still definitely one of the best teams in the league. They, they're still the Chiefs. They still got Mahomes, Kelsey Hill. Uh, the Chargers are an uprising team. They were right short of the playoffs. Now they, they're adding defense to help them out. The Broncos just got Wilson, and the Raiders made the playoffs last year, and they're only getting better from here. So I think Khalil Mack uh, to the Chargers is helping both teams. As for the Bears, I think this is really just what the Bears were going to come to. I mean, what were the Bears going to do if they were going to keep Khalil Mack? He's, he's, he's getting older, and – He's not really going to affect their success, especially if they're in a rebuild. So, Khalil Mack, uh, I think he needed to be traded. I so, I think another hot topic uh, out right now is Amari Cooper, who yesterday was traded uh, to the Browns from the Cowboys. Uh, he was traded for, I believe, a fifth-round pick, and then they swapped sixth-round picks. Uh, what do you guys think? I think That's so. That's a good trade for the Browns. For sure. I think it was a good move by the Cowboys, too, though, because they got a lot of people they need to sign. They need to keep that defense together. I don't know how the, their skill positions – they still have a ton of skill positions. You know, they need to sign back the defense. I honestly think that was a good move on that part. They needed to dump his cap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's a really good move from the Browns because they really needed receiver help. Yeah. It might be the OBJ situation, though. Yeah, he's not going to be as good as he was in Dallas, but 
I think the thing about Amari Cooper is that, like, Odell was kind of questionable because Odell Beckham, he was great with the Giants, but then again with the Giants, like, J- Odell Beckham was just give, give me the ball and I'll make a play. Like, with the Browns, Baker Mayfield was like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it who I want to. And they, it, there just wasn't a connection there. I think you give it Amari Cooper. We know what Amari Cooper can do. And I think adding him to a very lackluster team, like Odell got traded uh, from the Browns. Uh, Jarvis Landry got cut. Donovan Peoples-Jones is an upriser, but uh, Austin Hooper may get cut. Uh, so I think Amari Cooper, considering that he was making $20 million, and I think it's kind of a good move uh, from the, the Cowboys' perspective as well. Like, they aren't getting draft capital. But in the end, the Cowboys were going to cut Amari Cooper. Like, we kind of knew that the Cowboys didn't really want him. So they were just going to cut him uh, to have the money. Now they get a fifth-round pick and a higher sixth-round pick, which won't do much, but, I mean, it's something. I might be wrong, but I'm going to disagree with you. I honestly don't think Amari Cooper is going to have that good of a year. It's just I just don't see him working in that offense. That's just my opinion, but I I don't think he'll be a – I don't think he'll have – I think he'll have a fun – like a decent season, a thousand yards, but I don't think he'll get that many touchdowns. I don't think he'll have as much as an impact, of, impact as people think. It's I a run-heavy offense. Yeah. It's not where he belongs. And I don't know why. I, mean, like, I think the weirdest thing is why aren't the Browns good? Like, like why weren't no, the Browns good this negative. season? There, there was no reason why the Browns shouldn't have been a playoff team this year. They're coming off of a 13-4 yeah. season. Their defense only got better. They still have Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. I mean, Odell didn't get traded until the midseason. If the Browns weren't so bad, Odell probably would have stayed. So I, I don't know what's going on with them. Because Baker had shoulder problems the whole year. Nick Kareem Hunt was injured a lot of the year. Nick Chubb was injured some. So I can kind of understand why they didn't. They would have won more games. They didn't have Case Keenum starting like four or five of the games. Yeah. And also, Baker was just having shoulder issues. I think he'll get back into a rhythm next year. I think the Browns are a playoff team. I think the Browns just – they need to move on from Baker Mayfield. I think Baker Mayfield is a bottom five QB in the league. Like, he's just – he's horrible. Like – That's too far. Like, he he has he has the best – he has the best running backs in the league. He had Odell Beckham. He had Jarvis Landry. He had a good tight end and Austin Hooper. All of them are off – basically off the team because of him. You know, like, it, it, Jarvis Landry didn't work out in Cleveland because of Baker Mayfield. He was doing fine with Tyrod Taylor. It, J- Odell Beckham was a top five receiver in New York, and then Austin Hooper was pretty good. Um, Like, it's just Baker Mayfield just – he 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 makes the team worse. He's I think Case Keenum's just – Case Keenum's not much worse than Baker Mayfield right now. I think that – the Browns need to go out. With, I think I think we need to give they need to give Baker one more year. Last year we can't tell if it was last year because he his shoulder was injured the whole year and he's trying to tough it out. So honestly, I don't think even his sophomore was, year though, like he was horrible in his second season. I understand that, but I would give him one more year. If he's bad next year, get rid of him. I agree, get rid of him. But I'd give him one more year. I think the Browns need to take a shot in the, like the third or fourth round. Like I think. If they go after a guy like uh, – they got to go after a guy like maybe Carson Strong if they want to take a chance on. But they have to give Baker Mayfield competition. Like, Baker Mayfield just sitting there. I have my starting job, and that's why he's – doing. like, there's nothing – Baker Mayfield has nothing to worry about because the Browns aren't going to replace him. It's the same thing with Daniel Jones. To draft QB, I don't think the QB draft like in this draft is very strong. I think it's weak, especially in the later rounds. I wouldn't take a chance on that draft. That's my opinion. It, what do you think, Reese? It's just give him another year. It he right. had shoulder problems the whole year. He was hurt the whole time, mm-hmm. and it's you're not gonna find a better quarterback than him in the draft unless you pick one in the top ten, and they don't don't have a top ten pick. So, yeah, but my thing is just. The Browns are the type of team right now in the current state where they're not going to be a bad team. They're not going to be a horrible team to the point where they're getting the number one overall pick. Like, I think this right now, the the, the draft class right now 
is definitely the worst draft class for quarterbacks when it comes to all around talent. I think this is the most depth quarterback class. Last year, there weren't quarterbacks who could serve in the third round. Like you could have a starting quarterback in the second you could draft one in the second round, third round. Like I see where he's going. Like Sam Howell. You have Sam Howell. You have Matt Corral. You have Desmond Ritter. You have Carson Strong. Sam like these are serviceable QBs in the second and third round. Like last year, let's last year let's let's say last year, uh, who was it? Trevor Lawrence. They were the main five in the top fifteen. Then you had Davis Mills in the second round. Who after that was good? There was no one else. Same thing with the twenty twenty draft. Other than Jalen Hurts, there was no one else. So this class, you could definitely take a shot at a guy like Carson Strong or Sam Howell, and he may be bad, but he also may be good. So I think that the Browns need to look at quarterback. They need to give Baker competition, or else Baker's just going to play as good old Baker. Yeah. All right. We got another one. Uh, Kirk Cousins returns to Minnesota. What do you guys think about that? They will continue to be mediocre for the next five years. I just – Bro, if the if the Vikings aren't mediocre, the Earth falls off its axis. They've they've been mediocre for the past three years, except for the year they made the playoff. Like, remember the year? I think they played the Eagles to go to the Super Bowl. Since that game, they've been mediocre every season. I I think their defense is the problem. I like Kirk. I honestly, I think he's an average quarterback who does his job. He doesn't turn the ball over too much, but. I don't think he's going to win you playoff games. That's just my opinion. What do you all think? He's a good quarterback, but he's not going to win you any playoff games. He's, he has Dalvin Cook, Adam Thielen, and Justin Jefferson in his offense. You're, if you can't make a playoff run with that offense, that's just not good. I agree. Like, I mean, I think Kirk Cousins is doing nothing more than Case Keenum did. Like, Case Keenum brought his team to the playoffs. Case Keenum was able to bring his team to the playoffs. Kirk Cousins hasn't been able to do that. And I think Kirk Cousins, he he's a stat man. Like, you look at Kirk Cousins, he's able to throw 35, 30, 35 touchdowns a year with 4,000 yards, which is good. But then again, you look at the games, Kirk's made bad decisions, and the, the Vikings have lost a lot of games because of that. Um, and I think bringing him back long term really isn't the best option um, at this point. I think – you got to give them competition. I think every average quarterback who's on the hot seat needs competition to get their, to, to their fullest potential. Um, I think maybe you don't do it right now, but maybe you look at uh, taking a chance at a guy like Marcus Mariota or Mitchell Trubisky or looking in the draft, maybe even give Kellen Mond a shot in training camp because Kirk Cousins isn't winning them games right now. Like they're not going to go to the playoffs with Kirk Cousins no matter how good their weapons are. And I was really high on the Vikings this season, but then they just disappointed like always. It just doesn't add anything to their offense. He's just a solid quarterback that does his job but doesn't do the extra mile. Yeah, I think they're, that's it. They're not going to make a playoff run without a good defense. Their defense is just – Their defense is – Their defense isn't great. Their defense isn't good, but it's not like – that bad. Like, it's definitely not a defense that's holding you from – like, it's not a Chargers defense. It's not a Chiefs yeah. defense. Like, it's a defense that you can make the playoffs with that defense. Now, you may not go far, but they haven't even been able to make the playoffs. And they haven't been remotely close, you know? You've had teams like the Eagles and the Washington football team and or the Commanders now uh, who have just – they've just always been in front of them. And I think – even if the NFC is losing a ton of talent, they're losing Russell Wilson. Uh, but I still don't think that it's going to do much because I still think the Vikings aren't making the playoffs next year. I agree. Yeah. So I think I think they should put I, – I, there's nothing more that they can do for Kirk. K.J. Osborne had a good season this year. We know what Justin Jefferson can do. He's been phenomenal. Adam Thielen's a good number two receiver. Uh, I think the tight end in the O-line has been a concern. Like, I think they do need to put a better O-line for Kirk. But stats aren't everything, and that's why Kirk Cousins needs to be replaced as soon as they're able to find a good enough replacement. 
Like Deshaun Watson. I would love them to have Deshaun Watson. I think he'd fit perfectly. That, that would be good, but I don't think that's going to happen. He's not going yeah. there. Not anymore. But I think they should give it. They should give an effort. They're too focused on Kirk Cousins. They're like, oh, we don't need Deshaun Watson because we have Kirk Cousins. We don't need Russell Wilson because we have Kirk Cousins. You know? We need someone. They're, just, they're, they're focusing too much on Kirk Cousins. And I think that's the biggest problem. Uh, as for speaking of which, we got Deshaun Watson. He, he's he, he's not taking criminal charges. And he, looking it's looking like the allegations are wrapping up. So what do you think about that? I don't. Do you think he's? I don't think he's staying. Do you think he's staying? No shot. He, there's no way he's staying. All right. I didn't think so either. I think he would either go to the Saints, the Panthers, maybe like the Colts, team like that. We are. I could see him going to the Steelers. Oh yeah, Steelers. That's a good one. I think he needs to go to the Dolphins. Like, if he wants the most oh. success possible, like Tua for. Like, they wouldn't – it would be, like, Tua, and then you would trade their next, like, three first-round picks, and then maybe – or I would say Tua, two first-round picks, and then maybe Xavier Howard or something like that. That would be a decent would package. Be a lot for Deshaun Watson, he has I don't think Tua has much value at all, considering that you have Davis Mills. They don't have a first-round pick this year, so both picks would be in the future. So they definitely wouldn't be as valuable because they have Deshaun Watson now. And then Xavier Howard's on a downfall of his career. His best years are behind him. So I think it's a good trade overall. Because I think they got to stick with Davis Mills. Like Considering Davis Mills' situation, he was phenomenal last year. Yeah, Definitely the second-best quarterback. But another team I could definitely see is the Panthers. Like, I like the Panthers, and I think they're one QB away, but how likely is that going to happen? I think maybe. They're going to end up trading a lot of their good players. Like McCaffrey, definitely. McCaffrey would definitely be in that package. Like, they could get him, but they're going to destroy the rest of their team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wouldn't be too against him trading McCaffrey. He's injured every year. Like, yeah, speaking of which, McCaffrey's on the trade block, so, I mean – you, 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 I, I don't think McCaffrey is what they need right now. They need to build up a team, and they're basing their team off of McCaffrey, and that hasn't been working because. Hey, let's think about this. Chuba Hubbard had a great year last year. No one ever talks about him, but with that mediocre offensive line, I think he had a decent year. He was all right. I'm just saying. I he had no I flashes, know. but he, he, I know, I did, that, but he did. But I think the running back's time. the most replaceable position in the league. Like, yeah, we've seen C.J. Like, Anderson, how he replaced Todd Gurley. Uh, we saw how real, Kashawn Vaughn was able to replace Fournette when he was hurt. Like, the, the running back position can be replaced so easily that I just don't think they matter that much. Like, it's good to have, have a good one. It has to be like a Derrick Henry type player for the running back to really have that much of an impact. I think yeah. it's it's very wrong to say that a running back can't matter to a team. Like in terms of on the football field, like a running back's going to contribute to your wins. If you have a good running, like for instance, the Browns just have the, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt would literally be like a five win, a four win team. Like, so, and I think it's good to have a good running back. Uh, I just I don't know how much I feel that you really need to keep one. Like Saquon needs to go, McCaffrey needs yeah. to go, Zeke needs to go. Um, so I think McCaffrey, you trade McCaffrey and then a few picks, maybe PJ Walker for Deshaun, that would work, or something like that. Maybe Darnold. Um, but w- what are their destinations? Do you think in the packages for them? For Deshaun. I, mean, I think to the Steelers. And then for, like, they probably get, like, a quarterback out of it. Dwayne Haskins or Mason Rudolph. Honestly, I think I think the Steelers are going to draft a quarterback. I think they want, like, a really young one, like Willis or Pickett. I think they're going to draft one this year. I would see Deshaun go to more of a team like Miami or the Panthers. That's just the problem with the Steelers is their pick isn't high enough to get, like, the – yeah. They could definitely get Malik Willis or Kenny Pickett. They could get Malik Willis. 
I and I I really like Matt Corral. Like I don't know yeah. if I'll fall that far. I think I think if the Panthers don't get John Watson, then Malik Willis is going six. No doubt about it. Because I think Kenny Pickett is just with how good Malik will like Malik Willis at the combine proves like how actually good his arm is. Like that was phenomenal. And I'm not saying Kenny Pickett's bad, but what I'm gonna say right now is that Kenny Pickett isn't really. I don't think Kenny Pickett's better than like Willis can. I think Willis can escape the pocket and and deal with pressure more than Pickett can. That's just my opinion. I think Willis would fit well in the Panthers' offense. If you have I think a, your deep ball with DJ Moore. I think Willis is a lot like Cam Newton, like yeah, a I lot think. like 2011 Cam Newton. No, Cam was a lot bigger. Like Malik Willis is what six two. Cam was six six, but still, they both Cam had a cannon in his rookie year, um, his MVP year. Like Cam had a cannon, and then once he got injuries, he just got rattled. And then Cam was incredibly fast and elusive, a lot like Malik Willis. No, I think Malik Willis is closer to like a Deshaun Watson than Cam, but I think they could use Malik Willis like they did with Cam Newton, um, yeah, a few years, uh, a while back. Um, they just need to get yeah, we'll we'll go over the uh, we'll we'll do some uh, quarterback previews for the draft, uh, but first let's talk about the breaking news right now. Tom Brady is coming out of retirement. Breaking We're news. We're not surprised. No one's no. I don't think we're surprised. We knew the GOAT wasn't going to go long without playing football. Like, I watched the Tom Brady documentary. I mean, he just – he loves the game. It's based, It's pretty much his life. I didn't – like, when I heard he was retiring, I didn't believe it. I was like, really? So, I honestly am not surprised he's coming back. Do I think he's going to win, win another ring? No, I, I honestly don't think he is. But I'm glad he's come out of retirement for another playoff run. But I don't think he's going to win the Super Bowl. I think he needs to leave Tampa if he wants to have another shot. There's Sorry. no way he wins in Tampa. You're not winning the ring in Tampa. They're losing Jensen. They're losing Carlton David. They're losing their – their whole O-line is gone after this year. Like Jensen, Kappa, and – Jensen and Kappa – and Marpet are all going to be gone. Like, Marpet's already gone. And then they really don't have a left tackle right now. So, their O-line's going to stink. And then the receivers, like, they brought Godwin back. They still have Evans. Tyler Johnson was cool. But Fournette and one, either Fournette or Jones, one of them is going to leave. I wouldn't be surprised if Fournette left. Um, and then on defense, JPP is gone. There's no way he comes back. Carlson Davis is probably gone. And then, is Shaq Barrett a free agent? Who? Oh, Sheffield? Uh, no, no, Shaq Barrett. Oh, Shaq Barrett. I, th- I, I don't uh, think he I is. I want to say he's coming back, but I'm not sure. I want to say, is he a free agent? I don't know. But uh, I think that, that I'm not sure. I would love to I see. I, I would love to see Brady go to San Francisco. He grew up in California. That would be cool. Like, they could definitely trade. No, I don't. I don't know the deal though. Like, I don't know if the Bucks would trade Brady, or if Brady would become a free agent or something like that. Because I don't think the 49ers are trading Trey Lance for Tom Brady right now. No. I I think they would trade Jimmy yeah. Garoppolo. Yeah. Like yeah. Jimmy Garoppolo would definitely go to the Bucks, they but would. it's debatable. They wouldn't trade Trey. Because I think Tom Brady like. He, we know he wants to win another ring, and Tom Brady isn't coming out of retirement just to have another average playoff run to only lose in the divisional yeah. round. Like Tom Brady wants to go to the Super Bowl. Tom Brady wants to win another ring, and he's not going to do that in Tampa. In in like his yeah. tweet statement, he said that he's gonna uh, like he wants to be involved like with this Bucks team, and he said he's loyal to Tampa. Um, but I think the 49ers are what he's looking for. I mean, what do you guys think about the 49ers right now? I mean, that's what we want, but realistically, he's going to, I think he's finishing his career in Tampa. He's, he's go to the divisional again, maybe, and then just lose to the Rams or Packers or 
Just the, some teams. Like, yeah. I don't know. I think Brady I think has – Seems like – He has to, like, do something to win a ring. Like, I don't think – I think this is a, a lot like Brett Favre in 2009. Like, if you think about it, Brett Favre was on the Packers forever. He went to the Vikings – for two seasons, and he retires and comes out of retirement. So I think he's got to go. He's got to make a move, and he's got to do something. And if the Bucks can somehow retain a roster good enough to win the Super Bowl, stay in Tampa. But right now, yeah. Tom Brady has to. Yeah, he has to. Is Gronk staying? Is he gonna stay now? Oh yeah, if Brady if Brady stays, Gronk stays. There's no way. Yeah, Gronk. There's no way Gronk would leave Brady. Brady wouldn't let Gronk leave him. Sure. Gronk would take an offer from yeah, the Bengals, sure. and Brady would be like, no, Gronk. you're not leaving. Like, if I'm staying, you're staying. Exactly. Brady would be like, I'm coming out. You are not leaving. Yeah, but as much as I would like to like see Gronk with, with Joe Burrow or someone like that or Josh Allen, he, like, he's not leaving Brady. It's not happening. Yeah. Yeah, so, he's not. So Tom Tom Brady's back. He literally came out of retirement. Yeah. Maybe they retirement to go with Brady. Maybe if they go if Brady goes to the 49ers and Gronk somehow goes and I don't know how that would work with George Kittle, but maybe Gronk plays fullback or something. He's not going to the 49ers. No. We'll see. We want him to, but I think it would be the best option, but I don't know. We'll see. Yes. So now I'll say let's look at the draft. Um, we can do a few positional top five rankings. Um, how about the quarterback position? Reese, let's start with you, your top five quarterbacks from this draft. Um, first, I would have to go with Malik Willis. And um, then I would go to Kenny Pickett, probably. I'm not really sure about the rest. Uh, yeah, like Malik Willis and Kenny Pickett are definitely the locks for one and two, but we'll see. Yeah, I'll go Willis, Ritter. After Ritter, probably I in my in my opinion, I don't think he's that good, but I don't know. Maybe Sam Howell. I don't think he's that good, but other people seem to think he's good. I don't think Sam Howell's like an NFL quarterback, really. Me neither. I don't think that, but a lot of people do. I think the thing about Sam Howell is Sam Howell's going to develop into an NFL quarterback. Like, Sam Howell's not going to be running every single play. Sam Howell, I think, is going to be a lot like Brian Tannehill if he enters the league. Like, he's going to develop a throwing style, but he's still going to have wheels. He's still pretty fast. I see him trying to run like he's in college, and someone's just gonna come out and like destroy him. Well, if he goes to a a good enough coach, the coach won't let him do that. Like if he goes to the if he goes to Mike Tom, Mike Tomlin won't let him do that. Like, oh, I can see. No one would let that happening. Like no, Unless he's extremely fast, like, no one would let him do that. And he's not that fast. He runs, like, a 4-6, right? Yeah. He's not Lamar. Yeah, yeah he's, Lamar's like, the only quarterback yeah. that can run, like, no, whenever he I, wants to. Tyler can run pretty well, but not. Yeah, okay, he's so. Not, like, Lamar's the Tyler's only one. The coach Lamar's the Lamar's the Lamar runs the team, the offense. Like, Lamar is the Tom Brady of Baltimore. He can do whatever he wants. Like, Tyler, he has to slide, but. Yeah, no, no, I know that. Like, Lamar. T- Lamar has the same role as Tom Brady on his team. Except Tom Brady's the GOAT. Or yeah, LeBron James or someone like that. But yeah, my top five, I would have to go with... I would go with Malik Willis at one. I think that's a no-brainer. Kenny Pick okay. will be my number two right now. I would go Corral with, at three. Before Corral got hurt, he was my number one. But with that injury, he's dead. he's going to be three. But Corral's number three. I think Desmond Ritter, he blew my mind with the four four nine forty. So Desmond Ritter is my number four. As for number five, there's a few options. Uh like it, it could definitely it could be Howell. Um, it could be Carson Strong. Who else who else is in this draft? Uh Jake Hanier dropped out, I'm pretty sure. Brock Purdy dropped out, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Or no, Brock Purdy's still in it. 
Um, but yeah, I think I would go Sam Howell comfortably at number five. Yeah. It's between him and Carson Strong, but I just don't know enough about Carson Strong. So there we go, our top five. I got Malik, Will- I got Willis, Pickett, Corral, uh, Ritter, and Howell. Um, so how about running backs? Josh, you start. Running backs. I don't know a ton out about these running backs. I'm just curious. Who is your number one like person, like dark horse that no one's talking about that you think is going to be drafted? Mine is Jahan Dotson. I think no one. Number one overall. No, no, no. Oh. Dark horse. Number one horse. Oh, just like I a. Think Jahan Dotson. To be the best out of the class. Yeah, I could see him being number, like the best receiver in that class. Who's drafted way before, way after some of the other receivers. I think he has the potential to be a really, really good receiver, like Pro Bowler. I think he. That's just my opinion. I think he's really good. What do you think? Here, dark horse? Reese, you go first because I gotta think about this a um, little bit. Dark horse from the later rounds. There's like a few boomer bust guys. Mm-hmm. Like, Sam Howell, I'll be honest, he's either going to be a huge bust or he's going to be, like, he's not going to be Patrick Mahomes, but he's going to be, like, crazy. Mm-hmm. Christian but Watson. He's not gonna be a middle. Yeah, Crystal. A lot of people have talked about that. He's not really a dark horse. Yeah, Christian Watson, 6'5", and then a 4'3". Yeah, Jahan Dotson might be, is going to be a late first, early second, and I think he's going to be the I think Jahan Dotson is going to be no better than, like, what Elijah Moore did this season. Wow. Like, beginning of the second round, goes to a bad team and just does something all right. All right, we'll see. We'll see. I I'll think Christian Watson's a freak. Oh, yeah. That dude's 6'5", 215, and ran a 4'3". Like, that's incredible. That DK Metcalf's at least, like, 6'2", or 6'3", but he's, he's insane. Like, he's 6'5". But as for my dark horse, um... That's really uh, an interesting question. Like, I do like the corners from this class. Like, I like Kyler Gordon. I like uh, Roger McCreary and Darion Kendrick. Um, but as I would say, probably like Trayvon Walker or someone like that, who definitely is – or Jordan Davis. I think Jordan Davis, actually. I mean, Walker had an amazing season, like almost highs in the season. And it's just like everyone's kind of – it's kind of strange. Like I, I watch a lot of like you know, Jordan Davis. I mean, about. that dude's no phenomenal. No one ever talked about Kenneth Walker anymore. It's like they forgot about him. So he's the I best running back in the class. Nah, it's Brees Hall. Uh, Brees Hall is better. I mean, well, we don't know what we don't know a ton about the running backs. So how about let's just go to receivers? Top five receivers. Yeah. I know I'm Ohio State fan, so you guys think I'm biased. But honestly, right now, the first two are probably Olave and Garrett Wilson. But Garrett Wilson's first. I I can't say it's not. Like, who's better than Wilson? I mean, Jamison Williams is the only guy I would compare Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave to. Guy that I was What's his name? Brees Hall. Dang it. He looks really good. Yeah. I think my top five, oh. I think Wilson's the best right now. Garrett Wilson, number one. I would go. I agree. I would go Jamison Williams, too. I like Jamison Williams a lot. Like that dude, I don't know. Um, And then number three would be Alave for me. Um, number four would number four would be Drake London, just because of how like he's like six five, he's fast, um, a lot like Chase Claypool, um, and then probably my number five would be Trey Long Burks, maybe. Yeah. Debatable, um, but I also like John John Mechie. Because I'm really hoping the Patriots could get John Mechie in the... Uh, uh, I, I could see him on the Patriots for sure. He said he wanted to play with Mac. Um, and I would like that a lot. Y'all, y'all, about Drake, y'all literally just forgot about Drake London. I had his at, at my number four. Really? 
really, really. I think he's really. I think he'll be great. When I look, when I look at one thing, topic that I'm gonna get take a little criticism for it, but when I look at Trey Burks, I see Nikhil Harry. Nikhil Harry's twin. I see Nikhil Harry in the reflection. Oh. Like, You're at least for the Patriots. Yet. For the Patriots Nikhil situation. Harry's just straight up bad. Yeah, but Nikhil Harry was the big body athletic freak in college that everybody wanted. And then when he got to the NFL, he, ended up being, he, was, like, he couldn't get six. any separation in the league. Nikhil Harry was, what, 6'4"? Nikhil Harry's 6'3", 6'4", 225. And then he ran like a 4'4". Four, four. Yeah. He also was incredible in college. As for DK Metcalf, DK Metcalf was hurt a lot of his time in college. AJ Brown was good, but wasn't great. Um, and he wasn't as... Yeah. Nikhil Harry was the best receiver in that class by a wide margin. So, it's, it's a little bit disappointing to think that Nikhil Harry, maybe he would be good on another team, but with the Patriots, he got no separation. He was slow. His hands were all right, but he was a pretty poor player. So I think that could wrap up uh, today's episode. Anyone have – you guys have any more topics you want to discuss or hot takes or topics? or? I can do my top five receivers for the draft. I haven't done my Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can do this. I would take, I think, Jameson Williams. I'm really high on him. Usually, people out of Alabama, they are really good. I think he's, I honestly think he's going to be really good. I'm going Jameson Williams one. I hate I it. still think Drake, Drake um, London's good. I'm taking him two. I'm taking Jahan Dotson three. I oh, know. my gosh. I know the Ohio State receiver. Why How are you not putting it? What? Like I know, I know. Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson are probably the best receivers in college right now. That that's insane. I don't know. I don't know. N- name a oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you can't try and argue. Fine, that fine. Okay, I'll, I changed my mind. Okay, I changed my mind. Fine. Jameson Williams one. I would put Garrett Wilson two. Drake London three. Chris Lave four. And then I would put Jahan Dobbs five. Okay. Still think a lot is better than London. Being number one. Except for Dotson. Dotson's not. Mm. Dotson's not that good. I don't know. I put him at five. I okay. I what? Five. I think he will. Final question. He's your dark horse. He's not. Final question. Who's your? Who's the number one overall pick right now? If you were to say right now, who are the Jacksonville Jaguars taking? I got. It's it's. I think it's Hutch, Hutchinson. I think it's Hutchinson. That's just my thing. I know a lot of people are saying they're going to take linemen, but I honestly think that's you. You're not. They're not be thinking. Go oh, offense. Be. I don't think that's what the Jaguars are trying. It's only happened once in history. I think they're taking Hutchinson. I'm gonna go with Ike Aquanu. It's either him or Neil, and but I think Aquanu is much more versatile and could definitely play guard and tackle. And I just think he's better than Neil. So I'm going to go with Quanu, And then I would go Hutchinson two. And then Kyle Hamilton three. The Jaguars are going to draft. Um, if the Jaguars are going to draft him. They should move down to two or three. Mm-hmm. No, because. And acquire more draft capital. Because no. The, if a team trades up, they're probably going to pick Hutchinson. I just don't think Hutchinson's worth the number one overall pick. Like, is Hutchinson, Hutchinson, I think, is quite overrated. Like, Hutchinson was in an offense, a defense that had multiple freaks of nature. Who David Ajabu, there were multiple guys who could provide pressure. And Agent Hutchinson just coincidentally was the faster guy off the edge. Like, Ajabu... He's not. I'm not saying Ajabu is better, but I think he's better than. Um, I think performance wise, Hutchinson is the best, and that's why he will go to number two overall. But I still don't think talent wise, Kayvon Thibodeau is better talent wise. Yeah, 
I think Kyle maybe even Trayvon Walker and Jermaine Johnson are better talent wise. I honestly think the Lions are going to take Cal Hamilton. That's my opinion. I think they're going to go secondary. Oh. I, I could see them going Hutchinson, but I think they're going Cal Hamilton. They had no pass rush last I could see year. It, but like they I had no that, pass they rush. Except for Amani or Warrior. They had no secondary. They had no pass. They didn't really have anything. But I think they're going to get like a. A person like Cal Hamilton, he can play anywhere. He's 6'4", 220. He can play safety, linebacker. I could, I mean, honestly, I could, I could. I, In their O line was just so bad. I get that. I think they're taking Cal. The Lions have bad spots everywhere. They don't know. It's hard to know That's where they're going to go. They need an impactful player who can play three ways. What about the That's Texans like then? Cal Hamilton. He's 6'4", 220. He can. He could play on the edge if he wants. No, he, he couldn't. Play sub linebacker. No, he couldn't. He yes, could. He could. He could not play on the edge. Like you cannot compare Kyle Hamilton to Micah Parsons. Mark Micah Parsons was We're not doing that. Micah Parsons was two fifty and could bench like twenty five reps. <laughs> Kyle Hamilton, his for his peak would be like Jamal Adams, like or Isaiah Simmons for versatility. It's Adams gets a ton of sacks. Yeah. I think they honestly that's just I think how they could develop him into I'm not saying playing the end. That's not what I mean. I'm saying I could see him them sending him on blitz ten to twenty percent of the time. I'm not saying he's gonna play I'm saying I could see him using him as a pass rusher like sometimes, not very often, sometimes. So then who go who time. goes number three then? Number three. The Texas. Uh, probably like Probably like Evan Neal. Oh, you said he's gonna go first. Probably like Thibodeau or like I don't know Evan. I think Thibodeau's fallen out of the top ten. I think Thibodeau's fallen out out of the top ten. He's shutting. Come on. He was so bad. Like he just didn't play this year, did he? Like the the Texans really need O line, so I I think they're gonna take him on. I'm on in other Kansas State. Yeah, but I would go number team. one would definitely be Aquanu. Number two would be Aiden Hutchinson. Yeah. And then number three would be Evan. one of three players, Kyle Hamilton, Evan Neal, or Kayvon Thibodeau. Or Trayvon Walker. Yeah. Or Jermaine Johnson or Charles Cross or anyone like that. Yeah. Uh, but I think – yeah, I think that can conclude this episode. Um, we'll do another episode right as, like, free agency heats up, and then we'll do one. Maybe we'll do a mock draft. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, welcome to – this is a uh, fifth quarter podcast, and welcome, uh, Reese. This was the second episode, so I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the video. And if you did, be sure to leave a like. Uh, comment and subscribe we're on the road to 400 subscribers and if you want to co- us to continue this podcast we will so i'll see you guys in the next one so will josh and reese and we'll we're going to be signing out see you guys next time peace out